I am uh, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, and I'm joined here with many community leaders as well as uh, Deborah Haberstein, who I called uh, last night and asked, uh, can we utilize and use uh, this beautiful museum, the Jewish Children Museum. It's a museum that's a symbol of all of our children in this community. And oftentimes, uh, people talk about uh, the diversity of Crown Heights that they don't focus on how we come together um, during times of need. We may be in different churches and different houses of worship and different synagogues, but when the community uh, needs to come together, uh, we uh, rally together as one community. And we believe that uh, wholeheartedly, and no one has really personified that more uh, than this building here. Uh, that's representative of all of our children in this city. And say it all, bring our boys home. I think no parent would ever want to endure this nightmare of having of their children on the way home from school, receiving that phone call and stating that your child has been harmed or your child has been kidnapped or your child is not coming home. And so we want to add our voice across the globe. All people of di dignity and decency are saying the same thing. Bring our boys home. Bring our boys home. These young men should come home unscathed and untouched. They are not a part of politics. They are part of being children, innocent children that are being used to hurt and harm other people. We saw it in Nigeria with a group over 200 young girls, and now we're seeing it in Israel with three young boys. Children should not be used for political tools or to methods to harm other people. Bring our boys home. That is important to us. America has an obligation and responsibility to add their voices to the call and to utilize our manpower and resources to ensure that we find those who are responsible for kidnapping these young boys. If they will kidnap children in Tel Aviv or Israel, they would kidnap children in Iowa and in New York. It doesn't matter. Sick minds do sick things, and it's imperative that we send out a strong message here in Crown Heights which across the street from the headquarters of the Lubavitcher the, the uh, uh, headquarters, sending that strong message in this strong Hasidic community and diverse community, bring our boys home. This museum represents not only the children of this community, but the children of the world. There are all faces of children of e every faith and every color and every ethnic group representing children of the world and of the universe. Our president, um, Michael Miller, I'm the CEO of the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York. The borough president, Andrew Halberstam, spoke about these young men as boys. Bring back our boys. Who are these boys? So I decided to do a little research today to find out who these kids are. Eyal Yifra, Eyal Ben Iris Teshura, is only 19 years old. He's the eldest of eight children in his family, and he chose to complete his high school in a low socioeconomic status town so he can help kids who are not as privileged as he is. His family describes him as vital, energetic, sports-loving. He's a youth counselor, loves to play tennis, and really ironically, when uh, Gilad Shalit was held by the Hamas terrorist in Gaza, who's also only 16 years old, who's a dual Israeli-American citizen. And he's the second eldest of seven children, an energetic young adult, a sweet and engaging fellow, loves to play soccer, basketball, as well as playing guitar. The uniqueness of Naftali is that he's an excellent Balkore. He's an excellent Torah reader, and he reads Torah every week, and he's very concerned about the careful pronunciation of the words. What struck me yesterday, Mr. Borough President, everybody here was when the parents were interviewed, the mother of this last young man said, all that we want is that these boys are brought back home so that we can give them a hug.
what we can do here in America, we can do here in Crown Heights together with our president and everybody standing here, is to give them two kinds of hugs. One of them is a spiritual hug through all of our prayers and all the recitation of psalms of Tehillim that we have been saying. But the second is a virtual hug, not only to hug the boys, but to hug their parents, and probably most importantly, to hug Kla Yisrael, the entire people of Israel. We're very grateful to non-Jewish leadership for standing together with us as we call on our boys to be brought back home. But we as a community must, must, there's so many things uh, and decadent for people to celebrate as they did on 9-11 when kids are taking is the height of sickness mm -hmm. and therefore we want to show that we are decent standing against the indecent when children are born what do we say may you live all the days of your life that's what we want for these kids for all kids for our kids they should be able to live freely all the days of their lives so we're standing under the sign that recalls the memory of a close friend of us who was lost to terrorism so many years ago, but is a fresh wound and a fresh memory in our own, in our hearts and in our minds. And of course, we pray that the three young men should not, God forbid, be harmed in any way, but should return home. And if we really want to put this in perspective, look at the wall, and look at the faces of the children, all those children, and then close your eyes and think about the children that are close to you. And these, the children that have been captured, are our children. And we should feel the same closeness and the same connection to them as we, they, we, do, as we do to our own. First of all, I'd like to thank the Borough President, Eric Cotton, for putting this news conference, the gathering over here today. Uh, we stand over here in solidarity with the <coughs> world community an outcry that these terrorists, these Hamas terrorists who, who uh, kidnap our, our boys, it's our boys, and we have to see that, they sh that, 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 that the Israeli uh, um, uh, um, uh, force should immediately catch these people and not arrest them, kill them. Without that, when you take a, a boy of a 16 years old uh, who was, came from a yeshiva and is going home for the weekend to his parents, you have to be killed. You know, in the in, in the Torah it says, a eye for an eye. The areas, but we're more than one Brooklyn today. We're one New York, one United States, and indeed one world, all in solidarity with the Yal Gilad and Naftali. Standing and standing against these despicable, filthy excuses of human beings who can go and kidnap these three fine young men, and they're all our brothers, our sons, and we're standing solidarity with them. We the world, the entire world, to speak out and condemn it and do all we can to bring back our boy. The woman crying, and they asked her, Is your son one of the soldiers? And she said, It's not my son but it's one of God's children, it's somebody else's child. And I think that's why everybody is gathered here today. You know, when you put one penny into a cup, it's just one penny, it doesn't make a, a big difference, but when you put a lot of pennies, it really adds up. And everybody coming out here today, I'm a student, I could imagine, I mean, I can imagine, but what a terrible thing it must be to leave school one day and not come home. But the fact that everybody's gathered here today and everybody's gonna pray. On my way over, I was thinking, about something that uh, Elie Wiesel, the uh, Holocaust survivor, author, writer, and Nobel laureate once wrote. He once said that the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. And the worst thing that we can do right now is be indifferent. And that's why I know uh, my friends and my spiritual community in New York and in, in Manhattan joined in thanking you for organizing this because we have to show everybody that we can't be indifferent. Also uh, joined by elected officials, the representatives from Congressman, Congresswoman Clark's office, representative from Assemblyman Hikins' office, representatives from Councilman uh, Green, Greenfield office, and we're joined by our two uh, district leaders, uh, both uh, Jesse Hamilton and Renee uh, Collimore. Jesse. Thank you.
I just want to say I'm pleading to the, the people who are holding the three young men. It, it hurts my heart as a parent to know that I have a child going out into the world to do great things in the community to be taken captive. And we're praying for their safe return uh, back home. And I just want to say I, I just want to give my, my, my heart feelings to the families who I know are grieving right now. And if ever there was a time to pray, it's now. Just a few months ago, I was just holding this sign. Holding this sign. Bring back our boy. This must stop. Our children, they are our future. They are our generations to come. And we must make sure that we do everything in our possibility to make sure that these people are part. And we must do what we have to do because we have to protect our children. And yes, this is one Brooklyn. So we stand together with our elected officials, our Bro Brooklyn Borough President, and we stand together with all of you to say, bring back our boys. My name is Zaki Tamir from the Kranai Jewish community. Even when, as they walk in the, in the shadows of death, Hashem should be with them. And Rebbe, please watch over them. Please protect us and protect them and bring them back, bring them back safe. These acts of terror and violence are primitive acts. There are things that enter into the minds of people, the minds of terrorists, and coming together here today allows us to say that we will not be indifferent. The fact that we're coming together today, we are fighting the force just by being here. We are fighting the evil forces just by being here together and saying that no, we are going to unite. We are not going to tear down this world. We are not going to tear down the peace and the goodwill that has been created amongst communities and amongst humanity. I ask everybody to take this onto an individual level and onto a general level, that every act of saying to yourself, I'm not going to be indifferent to something like this. I'm not going to be indifferent to an evil act. I'm going to do something proactive. I'm going to do something good so that we should again see very soon these three boys alive and healthy. Thank you very much. Let one flame light all the candles so our units will One flame. Who's gonna sing it? to protect our children all over the world. They cannot be held as ransom. They cannot be held at the hands of terrorists. This is not the way that we accomplish anything in this world by using our children as ransom, as those that are kidnapped, as those that are attacked, as those that are harmed. As I look at all the little faces out here today, we don't want this to happen to any young person in our community here in Crown Heights or anywhere in the world. So we stand together as one community. You hear it in different languages, different dialects, different groups. But as one nation, under Hashem, we all say one thing. Children are children. As parents, as grandparents, as brothers and sisters, we plead and ask, get these children home back safely. And this is with one voice. So help us, Hashem. Amen. Hello, many of you know me. I'm Rabbi David Nesanoff. It is an honor to be here with this uh, group here. In times of such darkness, we transform it into light. We have to walk away with here with a pile with something to do, not just talk. We have to transform that darkness into light by fighting Jew, anti-Jewish by doing Jewish. We should put on tefillin, get other people to put on tefillin, 
the women should be lighting candles and get other people to light candles. And those who are not Jewish should be doing other acts of kindness. That is how We are approaching a week, and still, Jalad, Natali, and Iyal are still not home, still not reunited with their families. And that is unacceptable. This isn't a Jewish issue. This is a human rights issue. We must stand united and send the message that children, children are off limits and children should never, ever, ever be political pawns. We must stand united and send the message that our children are sacred. Our boys, bring back our boys. Bring back our boys. While you're at it, bring back our girls. I thank the borough president, Eric Adams, for his leadership. I thank my sister, Deborah Halberston. Nothing separates us. And I thank all of the elected officials who are here today. We cannot not allow terrorists to target children. They're too pure, they're too sweet, and they're too innocent. Bring back my boys. Amen. We want to thank, and thank everyone. I think we should take the leadership from the rabbi. The best way to stop anti-Semitism is to do Jews. You know, let's light a candle. Let's do things that will show our unity. Crown Heights is one community, and today we show that by our different groups, our different leaders, our different children coming together around this issue. Let's talk about this throughout the city. Let's not allow this to go silently by that children are kidnapped and put in harm's way. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you.